evaluate. So our integral is 2u to the 11th over 11. plus u to the 10th over 10. Are you guys okay with the integral? Some of those integrals are pretty nice, right? Just take the basic stuff and substitutions. That's, that's, what, that's what substitution is supposed to do. It's supposed to make your integral easier, not worse, easier. As it definitely does make it easier. Now what do we do? Good. Because we changed the bounds first, we know that our bounds are in terms of u. Not in x anymore. These were in x's, those are in u's. So as soon as we get down to the very end, it's now evaluation time. <clears throat> Just make sure you evaluate very carefully. We're going to get 2 times 2 to the 11th over 11, 2 to the 10th over 10. That happens from when we plug in the two. You get to plug it into both those those terms. It has to go to both of them. So this this piece right here is just the two evaluated. Are you alright with that so far? Yes or no, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. Then what do we do? Subtract. Subtract. All right. Got to do that. And we'll plug in the negative one. Two. Negative one. to the 11th over 11 plus negative 1 to the 10th over 10. Oh my, how much is 2 to the 12th? Because that's what that, that is, that's 2 to the 12th. 2,048. 2,048? Okay. I'll believe you. Yeah. <laughs> I meant to the twelfth, not to the eleventh, to the twelfth. Four thousand ninety-six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because two to the twelfth, two times two to the eleventh is two to the twelfth. So you can either do two times two to the eleventh times two. That's going to give you that, or just two to the twelfth gives you that. Plus two to the tenth. One thousand. Yeah. Okay, all right, minus, well, 2 times 1, negative 1 to the 11th, negative 1 to the 11th, just negative 1, you got the odd exponent up there, it's going to be negative, so this is negative 2 11ths, that though, that's a negative to the 10th power, that's going to be positive 1, so this would be plus 1 tenth. I'm going slowly so you see where all these numbers are coming from. Can you follow the fraction work? I know fractions are not your favorite thing, but it's, it's Friday, right? What happens on Friday? Fractions. Obviously. <laughs> Duh. Fraction Friday. Okay. So we've got 4096 over 11. Plus 1024 over 10. <coughs> plus 2 elevenths minus 1 tenth. So far, so good on sign changes? All right. We'll combine some like fractions. We got elevenths and elevenths. That's going to give you 4,098 elevenths. That's going to give you 1,023 tenths. And then you're going to find a common denominator. All right. Which is? 110. Probably, yeah. 110. I don't want to do that. It's 52,233 one tenths. <laughs> Wait, 52,233 over, over, over one tenth. That's the simplified fraction. <laughs> over one tenth. Yeah, that's it. 
Awesome. I mean, that's easily relatable, right? <laughs> now, of course, what is this that we just found? Don't get confused with all the mumbo jumbo. What are we doing? That's an area. Could you find a decimal equivalent for that? Yeah, if you had to actually give an approximation for area, you could do it. That's the area under this curve between those numbers. That's what that's doing. How many people feel okay with that? Your calculator will do a lot of the fractions for you, so don't let that hold you back. If you can get it down to here, your calculus is done. Evaluation, that's actually pre-algebra doing all that stuff. Now, the numbers in pre-algebra aren't that big, but you can do it. You ready for one more? Yeah? Any questions on this one before we begin? Your face says question. Well, yeah, I'm trying Your to, mouth doesn't. Uh, I got to that point where I messed up my evaluation and I'm trying to figure out where my, what fraction I screwed up. Got it. <laughs> I'm going to say that's on you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, granted, this one doesn't look fun. It really doesn't look fun. Uh, it looks fun to me. I love this stuff, but maybe not look fun to you. Why does it look fun? Trig. Yeah, trig always throws you guys for a loop. You go, oh, trig, seriously? Oh, I hate trig. Too bad. <laughs> Second, it goes, man, it's not just an X in there, which is actually fortunate because you wouldn't be able to do the problem if it was. Uh, but it's a pi over X. And then it's over x squared, so there's a lot going on. It certainly doesn't fit the integration table. One question I have for you that's going to kill me if you get this wrong. It really, my head's going to explode on the camera screen. And then no more videos. So don't do this to the people at home watching me. It really sucks. But let's see. Can you combine this with this? No. And get, oh, good. Okay, it's not cosine of pi over x cubed, right? Right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> gone. No, it's not. It's not that. Then you'd get cosine of pi. That'd be a very easy integral. That's not the case, though. This is an angle over a function of x. That's what that is. So we have to somehow use a substitution. That's the only thing we have in our arsenal. Right now we have direct fit or substitution. Later on you'll get a lot more. Okay, That's your next class. But for right now, that's two things we can choose from. If it's not a direct fit and we can't combine things like we cannot do here, then it has to be a substitution for us to even do it. If a substitution doesn't work, then we are... SOL, sorry, out of luck. Uh, you can't do the problem. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and let's look for a substitution then. True or false, the substitution should include the cosine. True or false? Why? Because then you take a derivative of the cosine, right? And that would give you negative sine. Does negative sine appear up there? That is probably not the right choice. True or false, the, uh, the substitution should be pi over x. Pi over x. True. Why not x squared? Because it's not inside anything. It's not inside anything. It's not inside anything. That's a good place. That's a good reason. Also, when you took the derivative of, of uh, x squared, it'd be 2x, right? You know, and this is why I asked this question, that this is an angle. No matter what you get, you cannot cross that x <coughs> out. You follow me? You can't touch it. Da -da 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 -da. Can't touch it. <laughs> Angles. No hammer pass today. <laughs> we can't do, we can't touch that with anything. So even had you taken that as a U, it still won't simplify. You cannot go inside of that cosine like that unless you have one of the like double angle, half angle, Pythagorean theorem identities to break up things. You cannot do it. And so the only option we even have is pi over x. So take a substitution of U equals pi over x. Go for that right now. Take your derivative if you can. You know how to take derivatives. We've passed that portion. So take your derivative. Also, I want you to change your bounds right now.
Notice to take a derivative, you have to do that. You got to bring that x up to the top to take that derivative. Did you do that? Unless you want to use a quotient rule, which you don't. Trust me. Pi is a constant. You don't want to use a quotient rule. Uh, this is not a product rule either because pi is a constant. It's like the number four. It's like the number two. You don't have that here. So we take a derivative of u. We take a derivative with respect to x on this side. You're going to get what? Yeah, I'm going to do it in two steps. You see the negative pi, x to the negative 2 dx. Are you guys okay with that? How many people made it down that far? Raise your hand if you did. Good. At least you forget how to take derivatives, right? So we need to know how to take a derivative. And how are you supposed to solve for dx? Yes? Solve for dx. Maybe make it look a little bit prettier before you do that. Because right now it's like confusing. What am I doing? So to divide by x to the negative 2? You can. And then flip it up. But what this really says is du equals negative pi over x squared dx. Do you understand that that's the same thing? I, the negative pi stays there. The x to the negative 2 goes to the denominator refraction. Now you can solve for dx. If you solve it for dx, probably multiplying by the reciprocal would be the appropriate way to go on both sides. Or you can do two steps, dividing by pi, multiplying by x squared. In either case, hopefully you can follow this one, you're going to get negative, negative, x squared over pi du equals dx. I need to see if you can make it down there on your own, because that's some basic algebra, but you've got to be able to do it. Nudge your head if you can. Yes, guys on the left hand side, yeah? Okay, so basically multiply by the reciprocal on both sides, and this is exactly what you're going to get. Also, I told you to change bounds. Where do you change bounds? Do you do it here? Yeah. Where do you change bounds? Yeah. Way up top, all the way at the beginning. So let's go ahead. We'll change our bounds. I'll do it right here in this corner. When x equals 3, we want to find out what u is. When x equals 1, I want to find out what u is. When x equals 3, u is supposed to equal pi over that x. So that would be pi over 3. That one is almost in the way, so I didn't want to confuse you. Pi over 3. Did you get pi over 3 as well? When x equals 1, u is supposed to be pi over x. So u would equal pi. How many people feel okay with this so far? Make sure you have these in the correct order. Make sure you map them correctly from x to u correctly. If you don't, you're going to get the wrong sign on your integral. So watch what happens here. When I do my substitution, what was x? Well, it's 3. What's the u that correlates with 3? Pi over 3. When x is 1, what's the u that correlates with x equals 1? Right now you'll notice something. Do you see what's technically wrong with this picture? It is backwards. That's right, it's backwards. 